Amen. Glory be to God. This is Evangelist Jesse Green. Amen. With my morning discussion on my own personal Bible study. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we actually give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Amen. We are going to continue in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, in its B portion. I mean, Isaiah 58, the 58th chapter, and the B portion of the ninth verse. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And it says, amen, I'll put take away. Because if you read, it said, it said if thou take away from the midst of the, the yoke, which I shared with you yesterday, not only take away the yoke, but take away the pointing or the putting forth of the finger, or the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. This is the title of this message. Take away the pointing the finger and speaking wickedness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want to speak wickedness against the true prophets of God. Not only if not, not the one just have a gift of prophecy, but those who are proclaiming the word of God. That's what that's what prophecy really mean. Proclaiming the word of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So amen. We're going to go. Amen. Into the book of first Kings. Hallelujah. The book of First Kings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord want me to sing this song. I got a, a raspy voice. I used to be a deacon on the board. So I'm going to just sing a little bit of this worship song before I go forth. Just pray for me. Amen. <clears throat> you all know this song. Just a little portion of that voice for a minute. Then I'm going to this word. Give God some praise. Tomorrow is a brand new day. All my sins have been washed away. My hands look new. My life is free, my heart is pure, I've been redeemed, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, we ran the race, kept the fight, we kept the fight. Shed our blood, we shed our blood for what was right, for what was right. We've carried our cross, we carried our cross through the storm and the rainy weather, yeah, yeah, through the storm and the rain because of Christ, because of Christ. Now we can say, I can't hit that note. My voice is not there. Amen. Let us get into the word of the Lord. I hope you like that praise and worship. I have to be obedient to the Lord. <clears throat> Let's go into the word of the Lord. God bless you, God's people. Amen. Give him some praise and some glory. Amen. Let's go into 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, the 15th through the 19th verse. Amen. Glory to God. 1 Kings 18 and the 15th verse. Glory to God. The title of this message, again, is taking away the pointing the finger and speaking wickedness. Glory to God. Let's read. Amen. The scriptures God has put on my heart. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand. He stand right before the Lord whom of hosts of a heavenly angels ready to go to war. Hallelujah. On the behalf of his people and against the wickedness that's in the land, I will surely show myself unto him today. Talking about Ahab. Amen. Elijah said he's going to show himself unto Ahab. It's time to present myself unto him today to deal with the wickedness of the king of Israel, which is Ahab. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he said, I'm going to address this issue. If there are some people of God that are walking in wickedness, that, amen, we need to present ourselves before them and let them know what thus says the word of God. Not be afraid of them because why? Elijah said he had the, he, he, and he said it like he said in his 15th verse. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts host 
liveth. He has an army of heavenly hosts ready to back him up. Whom before whom I stand. We stand before the army, the angelic hosts of God. Hallelujah. I will surely show myself unto him today or present myself unto him today. Talking about Ahab. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. Hallelujah. He told Ahab, Ob Obadiah to go, go tell Elijah, Elijah, I mean Ahab, to come and meet me. <clears throat> Glory to God. And it came to pass when, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou... Art thou he that troubled Israel? Now, now he's pointing the finger at Elijah. But the Lord had told him to go present himself before Ahab. You're the one in error. Glory to God. And he's going to tell him that. But you want to point a finger at a man of God that's speaking the truth? Come on now. We need to watch out about pointing the finger, then speak of wickedness against the one whom God has called to address the wickedness that's in the kingdom, that's in the land. Glory be to God. L look, listen to 17, 18 verse. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel. I ain't troubled Israel, man. <laughs> Glory be to God. But Thou, thou, you pointing the finger the wrong one. You the one that's troubling Israel. And the father's house. Glory to God. You are, you are doing this. Troubling Israel and the father's house. Got people bowing down and worshiping these false gods. You troubling even the house of God. And that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. What did he tell us not to do? Not to worship or bow down these false gods of idols. You know, Ahab even went a step farther. And thou hast followed Balaam, worshiping Baal, buying down these false Babylonian gods that's throughout the whole world. Through the Babel, through, I, I have ministered this once before, through the Tower of Babel. They didn't want the true and living God through Nimrod, Noah's son. So glory to God disfigured them, their speech. And they took their gods with them and they were scattered throughout the land. So here is this king of Israel picking up this Babylonian false god. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now the 19th verse. Now therefore and sin and gather to me all Israel. You know, the, you know the, the contest. Unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal 450. And, and the prophets of the groves. Of the Asherah Canaanite goddess. That grove. 400 which eat at the at, at uh, which eat at Jezebel's table. These not only the 400 prophets, the 450 prophets, and, and the 400 prophets that eat at Jezebel's table. A special engagement to eat with Jezebel. I mean, in other words, this is over 8, 850 false prophets. He said, go get them 450 prophets and them 400 who were who, who, who sit at the table of, of Jezebel because that that that, that were that eat. A prophet of the groves that worship or uh, uh, bring people into the worship of these groves or uh, Asher or the Canaanite goddess. They was worshiping a goddess, a false goddess. You know, today they worship the Baphomet and these, these mingled uh, God, male and female, this androgynous God, male and female. And they say God is a woman, a God. God is a woman or a goddess. Blasphemy. This Canaanite goddess that they was worship, Asherah. There was worship of a woman goddess. How many people you know trying to say God is a woman? Are worshiping a goddess or the both goddess together, the, the amen, glory to God, male and female, androgynous gods. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they're in the kingdom of God. But God said we must address them. We must go to them. Then they got false prophets of the woman that he married, which was Jezebel. Brought in all these false prophets. Set before her table, eating glory before her table, those who was before the grove to usher in the peoples to worship this false goddess. And the 400 other 50 prophets, he said, bring them to Mount Carmel. We're going to deal with this. We're going to show God's people who is the true and living God. Hallelujah. When God's people get so far off, they start worshiping false gods, they don't realize what they're doing. Hallelujah. Until a man of God stand up and address that issue. 
these false prophets with by the true prophet of God. But Ahab want to point the finger at him and speak wickedness, wickedness towards him when he's standing before the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's continue in 1 Kings. Let's go over to 21. It's 1 Kings 21st chapter, the 17th and the 26th verse. This is what Elijah said. 1 Kings 17 and 20, 1 Kings 21 and 17. Listen to what it said. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel. Here he go again, which is in Samaria. Because he was a king over the ten tribes. Jehoshaphat was a king, a man in Jerusalem and Judah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Behold, he is in the vineyard of neighbor. You know, he took neighbor. They set neighbor on high. They called for a fast. You know, I taught on that. And they set neighbor on high and used two men to bail. You can read this right up in here in the 12th and 13th verse of his 21st chapter. How they did neighbor, how they took his vineyard. How they called the fast and had him killed. Now, Elijah is addressing this murder of the king of Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Hallelujah. Now, listen when he said, Arise and go to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, thou just says the Lord, hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou and listen, has you killed neighbor and taken possession? You're going down to his, you going down to his land to possess it after you done killed this man? Heartless. 19 verse, let's read it again. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, hast thou killed? And taking possession, and thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, the place where dogs, oh, glory to God, lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick the blood even thine. Hallelujah. God is addressing this issue. So we got to address sin, called sin, sin, and wickedness, wickedness. They can point the finger at you and say, now you wicked all you want and, and they speak wicked against you. But you know you standing before the Lord, the word of the Lord or the Lord, the host, because why? He's giving, he's leading you to speak against the wickedness that's in the land of concerning his people and the king of his people. Hallelujah. And Ahab said to Elijah, has thou found me? Here he go again. Oh, my enemy. Point the finger at him again. Call him an enemy and answer. I have found thee. Because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. You can keep pointing a finger at me, but you the one that's working evil in the sight of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 21st verse. Behold, I will bring evil up on thee and will take away thy posterity or his children and will cut off from Ahab am him that pisses against the wall. You know that's men. <laughs> and him that is shut up and left in Israel. In other words, every man in Israel, both bond and free, shut up or free, or shut up or gone, or glory to God, shut up in the land, or free, or left, or have left the land. Those who are bond are free in Israel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every man, hallelujah, going to be cut off or put to death. This one king. See, that's why we got to deal with the leaders. Because it's one man is reigning in the kingdom of God, corrupting the people of God. He could cause the judgment just as Elijah just pronounced upon Ahab and any man that pissed against the wall. So we got to deal with these wicked kings, these wicked people of God that, are, that turn from God and turn to worship Balaam. He's before the presence of God. He's sitting on the throne of Israel. Not only is he causing death to come upon himself, but the men. That's what the devil want to do. Cause one person over a whole nation of millions of people are held account for millions of people in the kingdom. He was a king of Israel, the whole ten tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. And he was taking, he said, behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy prosperity 
posterity and will cut off Ahab for him, cut off Ahab and he, uh, cut off Ahab, cut off from Ahab him that piss against the wall and them and him that is shut up and left in Israel. In other words, I'm going to take every male in Israel, both bond and free and kill them, cut them off because of you, all your posterity, all the men, hallelujah, all the men of Ahab that, that, that piss against the wall and him that is shut up and left and bind and free. Glory to God. And, I, and, and listen, 22nd verse and 21, 1 Kings 21. And will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Amen. And like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. Amen. For the provocation, mean provoking, like in Israel, called the provocation, the provoking or provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. That's what Jeroboam did, made Israel a sin. Ahab is making Israel a sin. With this Jezebel he married. 23rd verse. And, and of Jezebel also spake the Lord saying. The dogs shall. Listen to this. The dogs shall. <clears throat> and, all, and, and, and of Jezebel also spake the Lord saying. The dogs shall eat Jezebel. By the wall of Jezreel. You know that Ahab left her hands and her feet and her heart. And I think they left a head too, but they ate most of her. The woman was so defiled, they wouldn't eat her heart. They left her hands and her feet. And they everything else up her hands, her feet, and her heart. And then and left, left her sitting there, her head that's sitting there. Ah, that's defiled. 24th verse. Him that died of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. Not only anyone that died in the city. The dogs going to even eat those that die in the city. Ain't no respectful burial for these of the, for, for these that are, of the people of God that's being wicked. No respectful burial. That's not cool. He causing a lot of folks to die and be eaten by even the dogs. Listen to this. 24th verse again. And him that died of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that died in the field shall the fowls of the earth eat. The fowls of the earth going to eat and the dogs going to eat anyone that die in the land. Oh, Lord, we don't want to accept wicked kings. See, Israel accepted this until he, that's why he said, bring, bring the people to Mount Corbel, you and your 800 and false prophets. For I can show the people of God who is the true and the living God. See, I want to show the people of God who is the true and the living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We got to do this or it's not going to affect the king and his realm, but it's going to affect everyone that's in the land. No respectful burial. The eating of the dogs and the fowls of the air or the birds of the air. Of the king, glory to God, hallelujah, and the princess and the prince and the, and the, and the king and the queen and everyone that even died in the land because they have accepted this False goddess, Canaanite goddess, worship Asherah. Hallelujah. 25th verse. But there was none like unto Ahab. Ain't none was like Ahab. Which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. His wife was stirring this up. Glory to God. Uh, incited it. Now, when you see a, a pastor is leading and he's in wickedness, then his wife is stirring it up. They got a spirit of, she has a spirit of Jezebel upon him. He has a spirit of passiveness and wickedness. Turning to idols and false gods, being led and taken, uh, and she took the reins and authority over him. Use of authority over him in his kingdom position and stirred up this stuff to cause the death to come upon Naboth, the killing of the vineyard, the taking of the vineyard. But God said, I'm going to deal with this in my kingdom. 26 verse, and he did very, and he did very abominable, abominably in the following idols 
according to all things, as did the Amorites whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. He doing the same thing the Amorites did. Well, we put, they supposed God cast up out of the land. You picking up that same spirit of the Amorites doing very abominable for, in following idols, false gods. Hallelujah. Jump over to the 22nd chapter with me. The next chapter. Glory to God. We're going to continue on here. This is Ahab being seduced by the false prophets that were in Baal. In Baal. I mean, in Jerusalem. And they could, uh, uh, of Baal. Glory to God. Uh, wicked prophets, in other words. 22nd chapter of 1 Kings in the first verse. And thou continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel, which is Ahab. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and Benjamin, the other two tribes. The king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye, it said, know ye that Ramoth, Ramoth uh, in Gilead is ours, and we be still? Are we not doing nothing or hesitate to do anything? And take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? You worship it like the Syrians. You bow down a false god like the Syrians. Three years you ain't had a pad of fight against them. Now you just decide to take the land. When you should have been to the land when you first entered into the land as, your king, as king of Israel. Hallelujah. Fourth verse says, And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou give me to battle? Wilt thou go with me to battle? To Ramoth of Gilead, Gilead. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel. I am as thou art. My people. As thy people. For my horses as thy horses. He aligned himself the king of Israel. Because they worship the false gods too. If you read they even had an, another temple there. Where they worship the false gods and their idols. Glory to God. So here Jehoshaphat was legally related. He was, he was legally related a man to Ahab through, through the marriage of the son of his son, Jehoram. You can read that in first King and second Kings 8, 18 and 27 to at Athaliah, which is a wicked woman that used some authority over the throne. Now she used some authority over the man, but this woman used some authority over the throne and killed the Kings and was trying to kill everybody that was reigning on the throne of God, leading God's people. So Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, that's who, that's who his son Jerob, Je, Jehoram married. Athaliah, Jezebel's and Ahab's daughter. We, re, we read about her, glory to God, in the books and how she was so wicked. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm sorry, I didn't even put the scriptures for Athaliah. Hallelujah. But you can read it. Yes, I did. You can read about it in 2 Kings. I'm sorry. Yes, I did. 2 Kings 8, 18 and 27. Where you can read about when he married Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So they was brother-in-laws. So brother-in-laws joined together with brother-in-laws. That's the only reason Israel and Judah weren't warned against each other. Because they had family connect. Let's read on this fifth verse. And Joseph had said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at or for the word of the Lord today. Let's, let's, let's require of the Lord today. Should we go up the fight against the king? Glory to God of Assyria. The king of Israel, sixth verse, in his 22nd chapter, the king of Israel gathered, gathered the, the prophets of the false prophets together about 400 men, 400 of them, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth, Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? Or, or, or not. And they said, go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, hold up now. Everybody's saying the same thing, these 400 prophets. And, Je and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah said, and said, is that not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? These 400 prophets, just like uh, copycats, they saying the same thing. Out of 400 prophets, false prophets, you know they're going to speak the same thing. Look at the TV, all these false prophets on the television. They speak this, speak, speaking the same thing. Go and have your best life now. And they are worshiping the false gods of masonry, false gods of the false Jewish faith. Glory to God, they're worshiping all these false idols and worshiping bow down to the material things of this world. 
You go have your best life now. Live it up. You are blessed. But no one is convicted of sin or hurt, harm, or danger that they cause in their whole family. And this king, most of them are not even kings of the kingdom of God. They just set themselves up. But you have some peoples who are set up. Hallelujah. As the kings of the Lord in the kingdom of God. But turn and start worshiping the false gods of this world of fame and fortune and riches. Your best life now. Glory to God. 8 verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. <laughs> Ahab said, I hate him. Point the finger at me. I hate him. <laughs> For he, for he doeth not prophesy good concerning me. I hate him because he don't prophesy good. See, God going to deal with sin and wickedness. He got to. He deal with the secret thoughts of the heart. That we may be purged, that we may grow, we may be matured in him. And Jehoshaphat Jehoshaph said, let not the king say so. Don't say that, king. Go get the man. Don't say that. We need to hear from the word of the Lord. And they're going to hear it. Then the king of Israel called an officer. He should, the king Jehoshaphat should have backed off then. <laughs> then the king of Israel called an officer and said, but he had made a pledge. When we read over here, he had made that pledge in that fourth verse. He said, I am, he said, the king Jehoshaphat said, I am as thou art my people and as thy people, my horse is thy horse. When you make a pledge like that, you can't go back on your word. Or the king can destroy, kill you or come against you. So he said, now, since I don't made this pledge with you, don't say that, king. Go get, go get Micah. Micaiah. Micaiah. And listen to what he said. The ninth verse, then the king of Israel called an officer and said, hasten hither, hither. Amen. Micah, Micaiah. Amen. Micaiah, the son of Imlah, and the king of Israel, and Josephat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes, listen to their royal robes, in a void place, in, in a void place, or at the threshing floor. Because they know this, thresh, this threshing floor was a place where you separate the wheat against the chaff. Those jokers are caught up in idolatry, worshiping false gods and Canaanite gods, and false gods and goddesses. And the king of Israel uh, aligning himself with his brother-in-law. Hallelujah. In a at the threshing floor, the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, here go one of the false prophets, the son of, of, Chena, uh, of Chenana, made him horns of Aaron and said, Listen to this. Thus says the Lord, with these shalt thou push the Syrians un until thou hast consumed them. Now let me give you, um, let me read my notes about these uh, horns. The horns of urn or going horns was a familiar symbol of strong victory or metaphorically used or applied to the strength and power of governments, kingdoms, and nations. That's, the, that's what they use these horns for, for the symbol of strong victory, metaphorically applied for strength and power of government, kingdoms, and nations. But they was using this as a lie. With no strength or no power coming to them or the nation of Israel because of the worship of idolatry. Let's read on. You can read in Micah 4, 11, and 13, where God made his people thrush a thrash, a thrush, or beat in, beat in pieces, pieces many nations. You can read in Zedekiah, the first chapter, 18 to the 21st verse, where the horns came into, into, into scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem, and God raised up spiritual carpenters or craftsmen to terrify and to, and to cast out the horns or the strength of the Gentiles or the nation that scattered them. See, it's got to be God's doing. Hallelujah. It's got to be God horns, the horns of the Lord, where they have on the altar. When, when people would go up with sin against God, they would fall down on the ground, the horns of the altar, and repent. Fall before the altar, repenting and, and crying out to God. Grab the horns of the altar, because there's no, and on the horns of the altar represent the strength of God. But these horns that he was using, amen, that Zedekiah 
was using, Zedekiah was using, was not, amen, the truth, amen, that God was going to come in and strengthen them and give them the victory over the Syrians. Glory to God. Let's move on. You can read that in my notes. I'm going to have this for you. Amen. The 12th verse said, and all the people and all, and all the prophets prophesied so saying, here they go again, go up, Ramoth, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. Now Jehoshaphat knew that he had, he, Jehoshaphat went, 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 went going for it, but he had made a padding and league, so he caused this upon him and his own people. And Ahab caused it to come upon him and his own people. We don't want to do that. Glory to God. We want to honor God. Grab hold, grab hold to the horns of the altar. If you do bring the horns of urn, glory to God, or the going horns, let it be the leading of the true and living God to deliver his people from, a, from Canaanite worship and the false prophets of the groves that bring God's people into the worship of these false Canaanite and false goddess and goddesses. Hallelujah. Let's read the 13th verse. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold, now the word of the prophets declare God unto the king with one mouth or with one accord. In other words, just like the other prophets. Okay, he's going to do it too. Check this out. Let's read on. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them. And speak that which is good. Don't speak to me that I told you I don't like him. Remember he said that? Glory to God in this eighth verse. But I hate him. The king Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel said, the king of, uh, of Judah said, go and get him, man. And tell him. Glory to God. Go get him. <laughs> but I hate him. Ahab said, I hate him. He said, don't say that. Go get him anyway. And Ahab went and got him. King of Israel, Ahab, when he got him. Then now he tell him to say what is good concerning him. Not bad, but good. Let's listen to what Micaiah said. And Micaiah said in this 14th verse, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. I will speak what the Lord said. Well, watch this sarcastic speak in his 15th verse. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth of Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear or refrain? And he and he answered him, Go and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hands of the king. <laughs> now he already told him to speak what the Lord say, but if you want to hear it, I'm gonna tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> Glory be to God. But go to God. So Micah, what he did in a sarcastic way, this 15th verse, let me read my notes. Micaiah gave the king the word that, that he wanted, but in but it but in sarcastic in a sarcastic tone, which was clearly recognizable. He realized, man, you you trying to you tripping you, you you trying to you trying to play games with me? You think I'm you think I'm tripping with you? You asked me to say you told me down here, hey man, in the thirteenth verse, you told me to speak 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 unto the king with one mouth or with one accord. Let the words that I pray thee be like the words of one of them that speak that speak that speak that which is good. So I did. Then listen, he said, he's going to get mad in the 16th verse. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee? I'll make you swear that you shall tell me nothing but which is true in the name of the Lord. Now you ask me to speak the word of these false prophets. Then when I spoke the word sarcastically let you know, I'm going to speak the word of the Lord anyway. But if you want to hear it, go there it goes. Go up the Gilead and Ramoth and go ahead and fight. You shall get the victory. You shall be delivered. You shall prosper. Then he get mad because he spoke the truth. Pointing the finger again at him and speaking wickedly against him. He said, let, let, you, you didn't really want to hear it. The, matter of fact, the king of uh, Judah had to make you go get him or come and get me. Other than that, I've been still in the dungeon. Bread of, bread of adversity, adversity and waters of affliction. Bringing molded bread and bad water. If he did, somebody, God made a way for him because he's still living because that stuff will kill you. Hallelujah. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? 
Hallelujah. Maybe this time he wasn't in jail. Let me reframe. Because you get over here in the 27th verse where the waters and afflictions came. Where they cast him in the jail and gave him waters of affliction. But he was in jail or held accountable or where was somewhere. It didn't say. They just say They just called. They, now he sent his men to go get him or to require of him. How many? They had gone to call Micah and speak and spoke unto him. So they went to call Micah. They don't say he was in jail or not, but eventually they put him in jail or in the dungeons. Glory to God. I just want to correct that. Glory to God. 17 verse. So the 16 verse, let me read my notes for the 16 verse. Ahab demanded that he speak what he really believed because he spoke in a sarcastic way in his 16 and his 15 verse. Told him what he wanted to hear. And then in 16 verse, he said, I adjure thee, may, I, I make you swear that you tell me nothing that which is true in the name of the Lord. You really don't want to hear that. Because every time I speak the name of the Lord, you call me an enemy. You point the finger. You call me the trouble of Israel. Elijah was the trouble of Israel. Now, you only had two prophets out of 850 prophets, Elijah and Micah and Micah Kaya. Micah Kaya. That's only two prophets that is mentioned in this book out of 850 prophets that stand up. I'm going to proclaim, I'm going to proclaim the word of God and I'm going to speak it boldly. And I'm going to speak it with the authority and with the anointing of God that break yokes. You can't come to the king. Well, king, you need to just stop doing what you're doing. And you need to just uh, 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 cease doing what you're doing. And you need to just uh, stop worshiping the Canaanite gods and just let them go. Man, that king, get your butt on somewhere. You better speak with some boldness. God said, set your face like flint and speak boldly the word of God with authority and power. That the Lord of God may break the bands of wickedness, loose the heavy burdens upon the people, set the captive free, truly set them free. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the 17th verse says that I'm going to stop at the 18th verse and I'm done. Leave y'all folks be. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered up on the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. They have no teacher. They have no master. They have no shepherd to lead them. The shepherds, amen, which is Joseph at here and Ahab have gone astray to worship false God. When you're worshiping false gods, you are not a true shepherd of God. The people don't have a shepherd that's leading them by the glory and the power and the spirit of the true and the living God that's leading his shepherd to good pastures. To land, amen, in the land where the waters are flowing, amen, with milk and honey. Let me read my notes here. 17 verse, the, the parabolic vision depicts the shepherdless Israelites forcing forces trying to find their way home after being defeated in battle. He told them, I seen them scattered. God, God, people scattered all over the battlefield. Because the enemy came in to destroy them when they went up to battle. Listen, let's read again. And he said, I, have, I saw all Israel scattered up on the hills as a sheep that have not a shepherd. If you don't have a shepherd that's preaching the truth, the truth you are scattered. You are being destroyed by the enemy. Glory be to God. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house. Those that made it through and lived through the scattering of the destruction coming from the army of Syria. Listen, 18 verses that I'm done. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? Now he's pointing the finger at, uh, at, at, at Micah, Micaiah again. Point the finger at Micaiah again. Did I tell you, king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, this man ain't going to speak no good to us, but evil. Now, you the ones that's promote evil and provoking the Lord God to cause the dogs to eat, to lick your blood, to eat everybody. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, God said it wasn't going to happen in his, in, in his time because why? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he humbled himself. But he went right back to worshiping the false God, the Canaanite God, listened to his wife Jezebel, stirring up the wickedness and causing all the people of God that died to be eaten by the dogs and the birds. 
Not only that, when they go into war, they're going to be scattered and some going to be killed. And those that make it through, go back and home in peace. God still gives them. Just let them go home in peace. Every man to his house in peace. Because it's because of Ahab. It's because of the king of Jehoshaphat. Hallelujah. But then he said, I told you again, he wouldn't even prophesy anything concerning me but evil. Elijah prophesied him. The word of the Lord before the army of the host. Micaiah prophesied unto him only what the Lord has spoke. But he pointed the finger at both of these men and spoke evil against them because they didn't want to deal with their idolatry, their wickedness, their evil. They're backsliding. They're going to hoing against God and causing all the people of God to suffer. So when you look at a man preaching the truth and standing up, you need to honor that man, honor that person who's speaking the truth, the word of the living God. Because he tried not to spare himself, but spare the people of God that he's shepherding, that he's in leadership over. Not like Jezebel using uh, uh, authority over the man. Then her daughter took over the use of the authority over the rule. She took the reins and ruled as a shepherd over the flock. Abatha was wickeder than her mama. But she was his offspring of Ahab, Jeroboam's wife. So Israel and Judah, both kings, aligned themselves together as brethren. So we need to deal with this. You can point the finger at the one that's speaking the truth all you want, but God said, Take away the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness against the true men of God. Hallelujah. So may God bless you. May God keep you. Is my prayers. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, and bless and touch and heal and deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. With love on the real. God bless.